Okay, welcome to a new series of Edge Revision Blast videos. Uh, what we do is we take a, a topic in the syllabus and we ask uh, 10 questions to allow you to check your understanding and hopefully improve your confidence. In this test, we'll look at 10 questions covering aspects of price theory and elasticity of demand and supply. So here we go. Uh, good luck with these questions. Question one, uh, in 2016, car drivers bought more fuel because the price of oil from which fuel is made has fallen. Uh, which diagram, A, B, C, or D, represents this change in the market for fuel? Take a moment to press the pause button, have a think about your answer, and then just press play when you want to go through the answer together. So which of these answers, A, B, C, or D, is the correct one? The right answer is D, shift of supply from S1 to S2. The right answer is D. We're told there's been a fall in the price of oil. That leads to a fall, a reduction in costs for petrol companies like SO and BP. And that, other things being the same, would cause an outward shift to the supply curve for petrol. And if the price goes down, then there will be an expansion along the demand curve. So the right answer there is D. Take a look, please, at question number two. We're told the market demand for a product is made up of the demand from three firms, X, Y and Z. The table shows the demand from each firm and also the market supply. And the question is, what is the equilibrium price in the market? Have a go, press the pause button and uh, just press play when you want the answer. So we're looking here for the equilibrium price and the right answer to question two is C, $9. So the equilibrium price is achieved when market demand is in balance with market supply. There's no shortage or surplus. So we need, to work, we need to work out the market demand. Well, that's simply the demand at each price from X plus Y plus Z. So if we add the demand from those three firms together, we find market demand. And if you do that calculation, you'll find that market demand is 8,200 units when the price is $9. The answer there is C. Let's move on to question three. This diagram shows the market for diamonds. What could have caused the price to change from P1 to P2? Have a go, press the pause button. So we know that the price has increased from P1 to P2, so something must have happened to cause the supply curve to shift to the left. The correct answer is A. An increase in the wages of diamond miners. Key thing here is to recognize that there has been an inward shift of supply. Therefore, we're looking across those four options for a factor, just one factor that causes um, an increased cost of supply. In other words, an inward shift of the supply curve, Ceteris Paribus. It is a higher wages, increased costs. Fall in the price of substitute gems would cause an in inward shift of demand. Fall in the tax on diamonds would cause an outward shift of supply. And if diamond miners are more productive, that would also cause an outward shift of supply. Here's question four. The diagram shows S1, D1, supply and demand, D1, the original supply and demand curves for fast food. Point X, we're told, is the original equilibrium. Fast food is an inferior good. What would be the new equilibrium position following a tax imposed on fast food and a fall in real income, income adjusted for inflation. Have a go, please, at question four. And the right answer to question four is A. A is the right answer. Uh, the tax, of course, will cause an inward shift of supply to S2, so therefore it can only be A or D. We're told that there's a fall in real income, but fast food is inferior. Negative income elasticity, so therefore if income goes down, demand actually will shift out from D1 to D2. So the equilibrium point will be A. The key revision point here is that inferior goods have a negative income elasticity of demand. Almost halfway through, take a look at question number five. A free market in other words, a market without any form of intervention by the government, is in disequilibrium with a shortage of a product. 
as the market moves, gravitates, if you like, towards equilibrium, what will happen to the price, the quantity demanded, and the quantity supplied? Please have a go at question number five. So we, we start off in a position of shortage, and the price, or the market, sorry, moves towards equilibrium. What should happen to the price, first of all? Well, the correct answer to five is C, the price will increase. Uh, because the price is too low at the moment, that's what's causing the shortage. As price goes up, uh, so the shortage implies there's an excess demand in the market. Price will rise. This will cause a contraction of quantity demanded, a fall in the effective demand for con some consumers. And of course, as price goes up, producers, suppliers have an incentive to expand their production as they respond to the profit incentive. Therefore, that should lead to a higher price, a decrease in quantity demanded, and a increase in quantity supplied and here is the diagram to show this p1 is original price where there's a shortage the price will gravitate up towards the price equilibrium pe with demand contracting and supply expanding have a go at question six a cross price elasticity of demand between two goods will be higher or what do you think a b c or d Okay, cross price elasticity, two related products. When when will the cross elasticity be high? The correct answer is is D. And the reason is so the reason is D. The reason is because we're looking for the relationship between substitutes and complements. So cross price elasticity refers to the closeness in that relationship between two products. When products are too close, substitutes, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, two different types of shampoo or cereal cereal bar, for example. A small change in price can lead to quite a big substitution effect. Uh, people switching easily from one competing brand to another. So the answer there is D. Here's question seven, and this one is about price elasticity of supply. So we're told the price elasticity of supply for a good is plus two. The quantity supplied originally was 200 units. The price increases by 30%. What will the quantity supplied be? after following the price increase. Have a go, please, at question number seven. And the correct answer to question seven is D. Here's the reasoning. Uh, price elasticity supply is the percentage change in quantity supply divided by the percentage change in price. We're told there's been a 30% increase in price. We're told the elasticity is two Therefore, rearranging, supply must have increased by 60%. 60% uh, of 200 units is 120. Originally 200 units, now the new quantity supplied will be 320 units. Three questions to go. Hope you're doing well on this one. Here's question eight coming up right now. The government wishes to impose a tax on a good so that the producer and not the consumer pays most of the tax. Which type of elasticity of demand would it best would it uh, be best for the good to have to achieve this particular aim? Have a go, please, at question number eight. Okay, the right answer to question eight is be a high price elasticity of demand. We're looking for an elastic demand. A tax on producers causes an inward shift of their supply and increase in cost. The ability or the extent to which a firm is able to pass on the tax depends on the coefficient of elasticity of demand, number. When demand is highly elastic, price elasticity is greater than one, the producer is, has less ability, reduced ability to pass on the tax. And therefore, they have to absorb most of the tax. They, they actually, there's only a small change in the price the consumer pays. Therefore, the answer is B. Here's two diagrams to show this. On the left-hand side, we see an elastic demand when most of the tax is paid by the supplier, in orange there, whereas on the right-hand side, a more inelastic demand, when most of the tax is paid by the consumer because the price has gone up from P1 to P2. Two more questions to go. Here we go, quiz question nine. The diagrams show some information about oil. Which diagram, A, B, C or D, best represents the change in the oil market between two and 2013 and 2015. Take a moment to look at the data, press the pause button, have a go at the question. I'll be right back with the answer.
And the right answer to question nine is B. The right answer is B. The reason being, well, the equilibrium price of crude is lower in 2015 than it was in 2013. I think they both agreed on that. Therefore, the price can't be higher than it was. We can eliminate options A and D, which show an increase in the equilibrium price. They can't be right. The chart also shows, as you can see there, top left, a sizable increase in market supply of production, increasing by probably more than $5 million a day. So being an increase in supply, that suggests the market supply has increased. Therefore, the best option is B, an outward shift of the supply curve, uh, which causes the price to fall. Last question. Here we go. Question number 10. Prices of gold, silver and copper fell considerably in 2011 again in 2015. The fall in 2011 was said to be because miners increased production. The fall in 2015 was because demand, especially from China, decreased. Assuming the equilibrium bef at before 2011 was X, how would these movements in 2011 and 2015 be shown on the demand and supply diagram? A, B, C or D. Take a moment to have a go at the question. Press that pause button for the final time and come back to me for the answer. Here we are, we're 10 questions in. What have you got for your last question on this blast? The right answer is A, the right answer is A. The initial equilibrium, of course, is X, true for all A, B, C, and D. The, um, the miners were told increased production, and therefore that would suggest an increase in supply. So that must be point Q as we're shifting down the supply curve from X, went down two supply curves to, to Q. And we're told in 2015, demand from China decreased. So we're looking for an inward shift of demand, which would suggest a movement from Q to R. So the answer there is A. Well, I hope you did okay on this, uh, this test. If you want to check out some revision notes, some more videos, some more questions, just point your smartphone camera at the QR code in the bottom right -hand corner here, and that should take you to one of our collection pages. I think this is the collection for all of our resources on the price mechanism. Lots of stuff on the Chitty website. Huge thanks for joining in this edition of Revision Blast.